Okay, Fire Freaks, this is Steve Gallegos, and welcome to another podcast on thetitlefight.com. We're going to review what was a huge action-packed weekend in boxing for Mexico Independence Day weekend, and we're going to begin with the stacked Showtime quadruple header from the MGM Grand in Las Vegas. This card was billed as Knockout Kings, and it definitely lived up to its name. In the first fight, newly crowned bantamweight title holder Leo Santa Cruz took on former flyweight champion Eric Morrell in a 12-round bout. Fisticuffs were flying back and forth in this one from the opening bell. Morrell, once a very good boxer puncher, has elected to stand and slug with his opponents these days, which made him an easy target for the much younger Santa Cruz. The pace was fast and furious for five rounds in which shots were being traded to the body and head, which favored Santa Cruz. After the fifth round, Morrell's corner had seen enough and called a halt to the bout. A great win for Santa Cruz and many fight fans, including myself, can't wait to see this young man fight again. In the second bout of the evening, former junior welterweight champion, the always exciting Marcos Maidana, took on Jesus Soto Carras in a 12-round welterweight elimination bout. On paper, you knew this would be a war, and it definitely was. Hard shots were being exchanged throughout the night, as well as low blows and hitting on the break. Referee Kenny Bayless definitely had his hands full in this fight and even took a point away from both fighters at the same time, which is something I've never seen before. In the seventh round, Maidana was deducted another point for hitting on the break. After the deduction, uh, Maidana found a sense of urgency and went back in for the attack and dropped Soto Carras with a huge right hand. In the eighth, Maidana went in for the kill and referee Kenny Bayless finally seen enough and stopped the bout. An all-action fight that definitely stole the show. After two great opening bouts, it seemed the heat would only be turned up as WBC featherweight champion Johnny Gonzalez took on former junior featherweight champion Daniel Ponce de Leon. This was a fight that could have and should have been made at least three to four years ago, and on paper it had all the makings of a classic. However, it wasn't the case. There was very minimal action in this fight, and there were many clashes of heads due to the Southpaw versus conventional styles. Ponce de Leon was able to score a sixth round knockdown as he sent Gonzalez through the ropes. In the eighth round, the two collided heads causing a major gash over Gonzalez's eye which caused the ringside doctor to stop the bout. The fight did go to the scorecards and Daniel Ponce de Leon was awarded a technical decision and has resurrected his career. In the main event, uh, junior middleweight title holder and Mexican heartthrob Saul Canelo Alvarez took on the very tough in game Josecito Lopez. When this event was made, the original opponent was supposed to be Paul Williams. However, Williams suffered a bad motorcycle accident, which left him paralyzed from the waist down. James Kirkland was then named the opponent. However, he then pulled out of the fight due to a shoulder injury. Then Victor Ortiz was named the opponent for Canelo Alvarez, and all he needed to do was get past Josecito Lopez this past June. However, his opponent Lopez didn't get the memo and scored an impressive TKO, which earned him a shot at Canelo. Lopez had to basically move up two weight classes to take this fight, and many, including myself, felt that the difference in weight would play a factor in this fight, and it was definitely the case. Canelo dominated this fight with hard, brutal shots to the body and head. Lopez was very game and landed some good shots of his own. However, they didn't have any effect on Alvarez. Lopez didn't have any other game plan other than to stand in front of Canelo and take the fight to him. Canelo dropped Lopez at the end of the second round and again in the third. After busting up Lopez to the body and head, Canelo dropped Lopez again in the fifth and the fight was stopped. Oscar De La Hoya offered an extra incentive to his fighters by offering an extra $100,000 for the best knockout of the night, which was picked by the fans. In the end, Canelo Alvarez was awarded the bonus. All in all, a very good action-packed fight card at the MGM Grand. Okay, let's move on to the other main event from the Thomas & Mack Center in Las Vegas. The legitimate middleweight champion Sergio Martinez took on current middleweight title holder, the son of a legend, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. This was a highly long-awaited fight between the great experienced veteran in Martinez taking on Chavez Jr., who had never faced an opponent on this level. During the 24-7 build-up, fans got to see tra Chavez training at unusual hours of the day at unusual places. He would also pull stunts such as deciding to take a day off from training at the last minute while leaving his trainer waiting at the gym. Despite all of this, Chavez came in at 158 pounds, and by fight time, he blew up so dramatically, looking like he gained close to 30 pounds overnight. In the ring, it looked like a middleweight fighting a cruiserweight. 
Martinez dominated this fight for 11 rounds with good lateral movement, ring generalship, and landing good crisp shots. Chavez had no answer for Martinez in this fight and couldn't get into any kind of rhythm. In the final minute of the 12th round, Chavez was finally able to land the haymaker he was looking for all night and sent Martinez reeling to the canvas. Martinez was able to get up and he was badly hurt. It was almost a replay of Chavez Taylor 22 years ago. However, Chavez Jr. didn't finish off Martinez when he had the chance and it was right there for the taking. In the end, Martinez would win a 12-round unanimous decision, which was deservingly so. This fight was supposed to be a test for Chavez Jr. to see if he could hang in there with the elite. I don't care what Chavez Jr. did in that 12th round. This fight and performance does nothing good for his career. He will go on and continue to be spoon-fed second-rate opposition, as he always has, and will continue to get some hardware along the way. However, I don't think he'll ever be able to reach that next level with the top elite fighters. He has his famous namesake, and that's all he has. His legendary father's shadow will always be with him. For Martinez, this further enhances his already great career, and with his excellent work ethic and athleticism, I can see him fighting for well into his 40s. Only time will tell. Well, that does it for this session, Boxing Heads. Until next time.